thanks for joining us at BMC Exchange. Uh, we're grateful you've taken the time out of your day to view this session. I'm Jason Mazur. I'm the Director of Marketing for BMC Helix. And I'm happy to be joined by a fellow Jason, Jason Meekham, who's the Senior Vice President of IT Service Management at the Bank of Hawaii. And he's here to talk about the bank's journey to SaaS. Jason, welcome. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. All right. So what do you have for us today? I'm excited to hear about your journey here to SaaS. Thanks, Jason. Uh, we, we have had a great journey to uh, a SaaS environment from the on-prem solution. And I'd like to spend some time talking about it and hopefully help others that go through the same journey and collaborate with you ultimately in the end. If, you know, if you, if you need a customer's point of view, I'm willing to make myself available as we go through this. So thanks, Jason. Uh, I want to start off just a little bit by giving some background on myself. Uh, I've worked for the Bank of Hawaii for five years now, and I was brought to the Bank of Hawaii or asked to join the Bank of Hawaii due to an audit finding. Uh, they had an audit finding that their IT systems were disjointed, was the word that the auditors used. They did change in, and work order fulfillment in one system. They did incident in another system. So getting to a single system, one was key, and then continuing to grow from there was another key. So with that background, I'd like to kick off and talk about, you know, where we were back before we started thinking about our, our SaaS migration. And it was Q4 2019, and our contract was expiring uh, at the beginning of Q2 in 2020. And between quarter four of 2019 and Q2 of 2020, a lot of things in the world happened. And, and we... Luckily, you know, right before all the excitement of COVID had made the decision to, to do this, and through COVID, we were able to do it. But if you remember back then, uh, Solar Winds had just experienced its vulnerability. And so we had lost, you know, Solar Winds as a, a networking perimeter tool. And we had defined when I first came to the bank the roadmap that's there on the right, you know, to, to begin our IT transformation. And we were looking at steps four, which was ITSM monitoring, and then steps five, which was metrics and reporting. And we partnered really well with our BMC rep, and we shared the roadmap with them constantly. And they, they were really good to help us out. So we had some situations where we had 35. Our support model is that our developers, our remedy support team, supported everything. They supported the hardware. They were responsible for patching. They were responsible for everything. And they're really developers. So I kind of felt like it was a poor use of their time. And where they could have moved us forward, we, we spent too much time uh, just supporting the system. We had 35 on-prem servers. Uh, that's lab and prod. We were running on Windows Server 2012 R2 at the time. And that was end of life. Me. At the Bank of Hawaii, we were considered a tier zero application, which is really tier one for disaster recovery, but it's what has to come up before we start recovering any of the bank's applications. So we use a funky tiering system. We called ourselves tier zero. And as a requirement, we had to audit test quarterly. So I was taking my developers and they were recovering our environment on the mainland every quarter through a midnight test over a weekend. So that was exhausting for them. And our remedies systems are the largest consumer of our internal database services. So with all of that and, and the remedy team supporting all of that, you know, we felt like we're spending 50% of our work units being running the bank instead of growing the bank. So we had some real opportunities as we met with our BMC team. And as we met with them, you know, them looking at our roadmap, they put together a competitive offer that really allowed us to, to move forward on the ITSM roadmap and to take care of phases four and five, and also to address our solar winds challenge with some monitoring. Uh, they put it all together and we signed that contract on March 23rd, uh, you know, toward right when COVID kicked off. And then uh, th they really helped us alleviate you know, the, the pain points that our, that our developers were experiencing. And we made a good decision at the time. And something that I'd highly recommend if any of you were going to do this, we used a, a, a partner of BMCs to help us do the integration. 
the partner we used was Cloud Action, and they did a phenomenal job for us in moving us forward. So uh, we appreciate all the work that they helped us do at that time. Um, you know, we landed, and, and, and I included on here, you know, we landed on moving to VMC Helix ITSM, and, and going to the SaaS offering was just the smartest thing we did at the time. And it really has set us up for the success that we're experiencing today and moving forward. Uh, it's really enabled our developers, you know, to focus on what they do best and, and developing and moving us forward. Both of my Remedy developers, I only have two, but they both have over 20 years of experience dealing with Remedy. Uh, and crazy enough, when I got there, we were on Remedy version 6. And today we're on Remedy version 2105. So, you know, we've, we've moved forward a lot. And, you know, there's some things in the SaaS offering that are just much better than having our on-prem support. Uh, our, our developers, because they spent so much time supporting and now they're developing, they're moving us forward as just at mock speed. And the things they're doing really are amazing. I'll talk about them in a bit. But it also saved the bank a ton of money. Instead of having to go out and buy additional VMs as we were growing, we were able to give some back because we got off all the existing hardware that was at the bank. And by migrating to the cloud, we were able to give back the hardware we were using and, and help the bank not have to go out and request more infrastructure. We also returned a ton of database space. And it really helped our database team with some replication. They were replicating over three nodes and giving them that space back really help them to, to solidify how, how they support the database service. And then really, I think what we're seeing now, and most importantly, is we were able to expand our service offering outside of IT. There are a ton of people now, and especially with the rebranding of my IT to digital workplace, more people are saying, let's go into digital workplace and let's create our, uh, our workflows and, and our services and, we were able to, to help other business units rather than, you know, spending way too much time remediating, remediating vulnerabilities. And I, I see it honestly, you know, with, we still run TSOM, VCM, TSSA. We run all that stuff on prem and, and the support for that is a lot, you know, especially with log4j and some of the things that, that happen. We're spending quite a bit of time with support still. And, and our, our plan is to, to move to BHOM and to move more stuff into the cloud because we've had such a positive experience with BMC Helix ITSM. So that's been positive for us. You know, some of the things that we love and I asked my developers, you know, what are some of the pros and cons to the migration? And without a doubt, I mean, my, my head developer that's, that's the most versed in it quickly, he just listed out some things, you know, it's just, you know, database size is no longer a concern. We're not worried about compacting the database. You know, there's easier troubleshooting whenever we have to work with BMC now. We don't have to get log files and send them over. They've got them all because it's all on their side. You know, he said, I, I'm so glad we haven't had to do all the vulnerability remediation. And we didn't have to upgrade all of our servers with those being in the fly. You know, the upgrade to get to the a, a more recent version or 2016 has taken our our infrastructure teams some serious time and they're glad they didn't have to do that. And then really as, as mi minor as this may seem, disaster recovery testing has been a huge deal and knowing that we're in the cloud and we live on an Island, you know, we, we really are at a threat and our data center, if you're familiar with Oahu, it's on the Southern side, it's really a right almost on airport property and our data center, if there were to be a, a tsunami or, or some hurricane, you know, we do run the risk that our data center could be impacted. So having the disaster recovery location in Las Vegas and, you know, working through the night to bring that up and making sure we can, uh, it takes some serious effort on our part. So to keep our developers fresh and not have to have them uh, participate in those quarterly disaster recovery tests all night long uh, has really made a big difference in our employee experience with, with, the, with that team. And their work-life balance it is is better. It's not good, but it's better, right? Because I I still think that I overwork them, and I hope they never watch this and hear that out loud. <laughs> but since they're overworked, you know, it, it does impact. You know, just taking any work units off them is a big deal. But one of the things that they 
especially appreciate is we now have three environments instead of just two. Instead of having dev and prod, we now have a QA, a dev, and a prod environment. And we can go ahead and develop, move it to QA, test it, and then get people in there. And when, when it passes QA, you know, promote it into prod. They love that. They feel like we have better uptime with smart IT. And one thing that one of my developers mentioned, he goes, I love the fact that if there's a problem and BMC knows about it, we don't have to log a ticket. They're already fixing it. No, they've already recognized it with other customers and they're troubleshooting it already. And they let us know, hey, we recognize this problem. We're going to put this patch in or we're going to make this fix. And they go ahead and take care of it. And then for our for our teams, uh, we're looking, we do some, because we're a bank and we like to be control freaks, we look at how we route our traffic. And we're looking to split tunnel our traffic and allow access to uh, BMC Helix outside of our network so if we can split tunnel the traffic before you log into your box especially if we have a problem and you can't hit the network that uh, you can either hit it with your mobile phone or you can hit it with a different computer with your active directory login and have access to log tickets that would be powerful for us so you know that's something we're we're close to delivering on so that's a, a big deal for us and then what we've done you know is and what it's allowed us to do is begin working with divisions outside of our information technology division to, to leverage the BMC Helix ITSM. And our a big win is we have been focusing probably like most organizations on the customer experience, the employee experience, the operational expenses, those kind of things. And one identified opportunity for the bank as a whole was looking at the ways that we do things between our our call center, which we branded our customer care center and our branch network. If someone were to walk in our branch network and request a name change, or they were to call the call center or the customer care team and request a name change, one of those processes would take a week, the other one would take 30 days. So just the inconsistencies there, like we got to fix that. So it's a better experience for our customers. So they wanted to document all of their knowledge. And it just so happens that the gentleman that's leading the the employee experience and customer experience teams at the time is a friend of mine. And he reached out and said, you know, Jason, you guys document your knowledge in, in remedy, or he called it my IT at the time. And he said, you know, what would it take for, for somebody else, another division in the bank to use that? So we started going down that path and we allowed the call center to start creating knowledge documents and the knowledge management in preparation for moving them to business workflows ultimately. And they put together quite the offering and we gave them an entitlement in digital workplace. And when they log in, they see their own screen and they've got banners that they've put in there that are beautiful that our marketing team helped them develop. And they click on their banners and it takes them right into their knowledge management system. They've been a great advertising arm for us and they've shown that to a bunch of different business units now my phone rings off the hook and it's, you know, Jason, hey, how do we do what the care team did? You know, we're really interested in looking at that. So now that my developers are spending the support time, we're expanding our offering to business units outside of IT. And it's been a huge success in preparation for us rolling out business workflows. We do have a couple of business workflows in place, but we know how powerful that tool can be for us. And as we're preparing to really develop a roadmap around just that, uh, we, we couldn't do that if we hadn't migrated to the SaaS environment. Our facilities team now uses BMC Helix as its request system. And I included just a little screenshot of four little things that they have in there. You know, simple things like for COVID especially, if people were working from home and their chair situation was just uncomfortable, they could request a chair through digital workplace, drive through the basement of our corporate facilities and corporate facilities would load a chair you know, in the back of their car and not have to get out of the car and not have to expose themselves to each other. Uh, and, and just simple little things like that, you know, after hour scheduling. So if someone was going to come and work in the building that they could come in and turn the heat on electricity is, is an expensive thing in Hawaii. So we don't want to cool the whole building all night if we don't have to. So if someone's coming in on the 13th, or, well, we don't have a 13th floor, but on the 17th floor to work, they could say, hey, I'm going to come in on the 17th floor between five and nine. Can you please make sure it's, I can turn the lights on, the air conditioning comes on, and my access badge works. Uh, 
we do have a homeless problem in Hawaii. So we limit access to the building. You have to have a card, especially after hours. So after hours, if you're coming, we want you to be able to get into the building immediately. So your security badge works after hours. And these are some of the things that they've taken care of. Uh, we also uh, create some unique workflows for different lines of business. Our marketing team developed the first business workflow with the help of uh, our third party uh, implementation partner, Cloud Action. But they created a business workflow where, where they approve and agree on marketing content. And, and it moves throughout different organizations in the company. And that, that was a, a pretty cool workflow. And then one of the additions to the contract we signed back in uh, late March of 2020 was we bought a dashboarding tool from BMC from one of their partners called Digital AI. And it's really allowed us to, to show uh, better metrics. And they have one really cool one. That's an instant credit score. And it's something that's allowed us to, to really think about multiple facets of incident management and work on them as a collective group. So those are some of the things that we've done that we couldn't have done if we hadn't have migrated to BMC Helix. Uh, and, you know, again, because we migrated, you know, I mentioned some of the things that are there. Uh, I, I'm not going to go over all of them, but I, I do want to talk about a couple of those bullet points. Um, the second bullet point, on that first one is we developed a workflow to reserve hotel space. Now that everybody is in a hybrid environment, if you want to come in and work, we've now created it. So between three different locations, you could go in and reserve a hotel space. Um, our facilities team just last week asked me to add one of our buildings to that. And the, the director of our facilities, team, she is excited to, to get us in the new Kahala workspace and, and get us working there. And also just a note, you know, uh, we, we captured effort time and our remedy developers were working, we're capturing about 48 hours a week, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's not a hundred percent of their time. Uh, and, and 48 hours is 120% of a hundred percent of their time. So it has dropped them down to now I'm capturing around 40 hours a week, which is still too much. You know, I, I put down there that we're trying to get them down to 1,740 hours out of the 2080 that are available a year. And that's backing into a number where we subtract, you know, vacation, sick, uh, dependent care time, all that stuff. But we don't want them to account for 2,080 hours. It's just, it's overworking them. And that work-life balance creates a negative employee experience. So we focus on that a little bit. And and backing off the support that they provided before the run the bank stuff has has been an uplift for them and letting them grow the bank has been a, a huge thing. And, you know, that second bullet, I don't know how much I should talk about this, but we did have an audit finding that came up, you know, being a bank audit concerns are huge. And because we had the capacity and didn't have to support, they were able to create a workflow quickly to approve uh, privileged access requests from our identity and access team. And that really helped us get through an audit. And it was neat because we were able to leverage the knowledge management system at the same time to put all of their new policy and rules in. And people were able to look it up, click on links right from the knowledge management system and get into the right workflows immediately. So that was just a huge win. And, and with those developers now available, they work with our other Remedy product support teams and looking at integrations between uh, BCM and CMDB, uh, TSOM to Helix, you know, TSOM to the CMDB and, and TSSA to the CMDB, you know, uh, they're key to all of that and what they do. So having them as resources available to do this stuff has just moved us forward quickly in all those areas. Instead of, you know, moving us an inch at a time, a mile wide, we feel like we're moving much, much faster. And all of the, the owners of those products are really excited about the availability of the remedy developers and and them not supporting the product anymore and so it's allowed us to think about our future roadmap you know we went home we were on remedy six for incident we went to remedy 18 now we're on remedy 20 and when we went home we had only done physical training 
on change management because that's what we implemented first due to an audit situation. So I'm backing us up and saying, you know what, we've got to do a better job on incident management. So it's allowing our developers to help make sure that we've captured all the opcats and everything correctly for incident management to, to give us good incident management data. And it allow it's going to allow us to, to, you know, to follow the roadmap that we've identified for the next five steps of the ITSM journey for us. Uh, and, you know, just this year, it's the incident management, the knowledge management, getting the right work at the right place. You know, they, they talked at the conference today about getting, you know, the service desk to perform level one tasks instead of having it being performed at level two or level three. And that's our focus as well, right? Moving the work units to where they should be happening. Our business, our IT support groups are realizing that and they're, they're writing better knowledge documentation. I just ran a report before I came here to look at our knowledge utilization and between June 1st and Monday of this week, which was October 24th, our service desk closed 40% of over 40% of their tickets with knowledge attached. So it's, it's been a huge win for us. And then, you know, continue to work toward establishing a service catalog and being able, you know, to explain to the bank what we're capable of delivering at what speed and, you know, making sure that we're right size to deliver the bank's initiatives as, as they move forward. So we really become a partner. And, you know, somebody used the term invisible in there. And I, I like that term. I, you know, Derek Jeter was just here at the conference talking to us. And I always like to say that that IT is like an umpire in a baseball game. As long as we're doing our job, nobody notices that. It's only when we blow it that, you know, all of a sudden the, the spotlight's on us. And it allows us to, to, to really partner and solution with, with the, the business units and understanding what our capabilities are, are just a big deal. So uh, with that said, you know, I would open it up and just ask, are there questions that I could answer or are there ways to help you? I did include my mobile number on there. Uh, if you call my mobile number and you're not in my contacts, you'll go right to my voicemail. You can leave me a voicemail and tell me who you are and I'll add you to my contacts. Or you can text me and say, hey, this is so-and-so from this location. I'd like to talk to you about uh, Helix, can you give me a call? And I'm happy to call you or my office number in Hawaii is there as well. But I, I would open it up to questions if there are any and, and happily answer any I can. Yeah, we, uh, we have two questions from the audience. Uh, the first one is, how long did it take from project start to go live on uh, BMC Helix? So I'll be honest, it was eight months, but there was a hiccup in the middle and it really would have taken us about four and a half months and the hiccup was as we were migrating from 18 to, to 20, uh, we actually, the Helix version is not aligning with the on-prem version number. So we were actually taking a step backwards and, and our third party vendor, uh, Cloud Action, he realized that and reached out and said, Jason, we've got a small problem. We're working with BMC right now. And they recognized that they were moving us backwards to a prior version. So we kind of had to start all over again a few months into it. But BMC was quick to respond. Our cloud action was quick to respond. And they moved us forward at mock speed. And if that wouldn't have happened, it would have been about four months, Jason. Hello, I'm glad we responded quickly. Um, one other uh, question that came up is, um, how do you gain a culture of knowledge management? That's a good one. You know, it really is hard. And what I've been able to do is focus on the service desk because our service desk, we, we're a small shop. We only have nine agents. And honestly, when I got there, we had nine different knowledge management systems and they were on the hard drives of each one of those agents. Uh, and convincing them first to get it all in one central repository and to do things the same way to make sure we weren't making mistakes was the was a big deal. And what it helped us do is it helped us bring on new service desk FTE when, when they started. It would take us about almost a month before one could even start answering the phone because of the way that they trained. But once we started getting that central repository, we were really proud that we hired 
a lady and she was able to take calls on her own after five days. And it kind of gave us some swagger at the service desk that we can bring people on, use our own knowledge. The very next person that we hire, he started answering calls on his own at four days. And the rest of the business unit started to take note of that. And then when they'd reach out to me and say, Jason, the service desk should have done this. I would ask them, do they have a knowledge document for that? If you will write a knowledge document for that, I can hold them accountable to that. And we started talking about poor work, good work, and great work. And poor work is work that you're doing. That's somebody else's job. Good work is the work that you have to do for your job. And great work is work that develops you. We've talked to, to the support groups with an IT and said, if this is a service desk task and there is no knowledge for that, there needs to be a knowledge document. If there is no knowledge document, you cannot expect us at the service desk to do this function. So it's we have some support groups in IT that are diehard. We're putting everything in the knowledge management system and making sure the service desk supervisor is aware of it. She's training the team and they're using that knowledge. And the cool thing is, is the data that comes out of that. We're able to show them your documents being used. It's been attached here 43 times. That document you wrote is used. And the cool thing is, is the comments that are available with the knowledge documentation. If there's something in the documentation that makes sense to this third level support person, but the service desk agent doesn't understand, he or she can give them the feedback on that document and they can go through, review it and correct it and fix it. So we don't have the same question moving forward. So you using it has just been, and committing to it with act just at the service desk was step one. And then getting a couple evangelists outside of the service desk was step two. And now producing the metrics and showing people on the regular has started convincing. And I'll admit not all, but most of our business units to realize the value of the knowledge management system. That's really cool. That's awesome. Um, one last quick question. We got about a minute left. Like, is there any quick advice you give your peers who are thinking about making a similar jump? Yeah, I would say for us, the hardest thing that we had to do was decide when we were no longer making enhancements and then stick to it. I mean, you've got to have that hard freeze and you've got to give whoever your your implementation partner is. You got to give them that time, work with them, know when it is and, and then train. When you come out of it, train on the new functionality and the features. And I use the understanding model. You know, I don't want people to sabotage our effort or feel... I use the term victimized acceptance that they have to use remedy. I want them to understand garbage in, garbage out. If I'm not recording certain information, we don't we don't get the data out. You know, and it's the Jerry Maguire help me help you concept. And once people once people have an understanding, they 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 buy in. Awesome. Well, that's the end of our time. Uh, I thank you so much, Jason, for joining us, and I uh, uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your time here at Exchange. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Thank you.